roll. Let it roll, man. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Anarchy Among Friends Roundtable Discussion. Before we get started, let me first remind you that we are covered by the BIP Cotton No Government License, which allows for the use and reuse of this podcast by anyone and everyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more about that at BIPCOT.org. That is B I P C O T dot O R G. We're also protected by Brandenburg v. Ohio in 1969, which ruled that the government cannot punish inflammatory speech uh, unless that speech is directed to or inciting imminent lawless action or is likely to incite or produce such action. And since there, nobody listens to us anyway, that's not a fucking <laughs> issue. Yeah, what she said. It's uh, not likely to incite anything, even if it was directed. So. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do listen to us, Go subscribe to the fucking YouTube channel so we can get 300 subscribers and then Odyssey will auto upload all of our videos uh, automatically. So, yeah. oh, you cool. know, uh, also, yeah. it'd be really great if more people would go over and follow the channel oh. on Rumble because be there's like one pl- to us ever. It's, uh... right. <laughs> um, the one person I'm pretty sure is a uh, uh, trucker man. I'm pretty sure he's the only one that follows us directly over on Rumble. <laughs> so <laughs> we're so fucking popular, right? <laughs> it's just it's just three accounts to watch the watch the video, listen to it on the MP3, go to Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> the same person. <laughs> yeah. Just press play on YouTube, but then pause it right away. Go to the uh, pod the audio only version and pause it right away, and then go to the Rumble version and pause it right away, and just listen to all three of them simultaneously. simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> surround sound, sound, surround sound, sound, sound. Put put different on on different you know behind you and one to your right. <laughs> no one wants to hear my voice from one direction, let alone Stay three. Or four. <laughs> Derek the snort one said, makes them. Yeah. Dirica snort hits the brown note. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck getting one out of me tonight, you guys. I'm not even high. So. Oh, oh, no, it'll happen. It'll happen. I, I have an article that'll make it happen. All right. Well, just tell me to spit out my gum before you start reading that article. So I don't oh, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you Aspirate at all. your gum. <laughs> no shit. No, we have an article about brown trout being addicted to meth. Oh my god. <laughs> Speaking There's of a notes. scientific study conducted to determine if trout can get addicted to meth. You did this because you knew I was gonna be on today. Yes. <laughs> you I'm assuming this is probably a tax tax uh, it, payer well, no, study. No, it is it is not a US study. Oh, it's not. Okay. No. no. It doesn't mean that we didn't pay for it. It's the, That's the true. Czech, it's the Czech Republic. Oh, so, yeah, that still doesn't pay. mean we didn't pay okay. for it. <laughs> well, it's less likely, at least. Well, at least, at least I didn't bring up San Francisco and the twenty thousand dollars trash cans. Thousand dollars. Because that would that would be... have been a fun one, though. That would have been hilarious. No, that would not have been a fun one. Because it's. <coughs> it... <laughs> The, the old line from Independence Day comes to mind when I hear shit like that. Yeah, you know I know. I, mean? I thought the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> they pent, spent $10,000 on a hammer and $20,000 on a toilet seat, did you? <laughs> yeah. I spent half of that on my new deck. You guys yeah, have seen the pictures. It's yeah. pretty involved. Derica has a nice deck. Yes. <laughs> Derica has a nice deck. It's a It's a big deck. She it's likes a big to sh- back deck. She likes to show <laughs> off her new deck. Uh-huh. I do. It has yeah. not it has <laughs> it has naughty wood. And we still have the hot tub out there, so I can go out there and get all hot and wet. So it's a hot hot wet deck? Mm-hmm. This is the shit that people listen to us for, right here. <laughs> 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 Speaking of that, let's just get into that since this is a segue. Speaking of, right. speaking of Derica's deck, <laughs> complaints result in police raid and sodomy charges at a Maryland bookstore. Sounds like a Tuesday in Maryland. <laughs> it, 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 there's, there's more. Solid ones. 
the like, like, always unlike, is. Yeah, unlike Dirka's deck, there's more to the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, a raid on a Maryland adult bookstore in May resulted in some potentially unconstitutional arrests of three men for violating the state's partially repealed sodomy law. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Partially repealed. It just, I know. I know. Yep. I know they where you're going. a law that's been repealed. <sighs> okay. Oh, just, okay. On Tuesday, the Washington Blade reported that back in May, the Hartford County Sheriff's Office arrested nine people when it raided Bush River Books and Video Store in Abington, just north of Baltimore. Of those nine, only three men were charged with perverted sexual practice. What the? Perverted sexual practice. Um, that sounds like a Tuesday night in my house. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fucking know another, what the big deal is. That's, an, that's every day in your house, Dierica. Another yeah, four were charged with indecent exposure. One was charged with indecent exposure and perverted sexual practice. And another person was arrested for solicitation of prostitution. I've been to parties like that. The statement the sheriff's oh, office gave the blade says that one of the undercover female officers was solicited by one of the bookstore's patrons. Um, Quote, I went inside, really, or I went inside just... and I was hooking up with someone and the next thing I know, eight of us were against the wall with handcuffs and plastic zip ties on them. And we all spent the night in jail. I was released at like six o'clock in the morning. That is according to one what? of the people arrested. What was the the adult bookstore being raided for? What were the oh the the, we'll, suspicions we'll get to we'll get to that we'll get to that oh okay All right. well right. but my question is is were the handcuffs part of the event or yeah, was, was that was or the did they just grab them like, off the wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were bring the handcuffs. Bring with them. They're just like <laughs> just grab the fuzzy ones off the wall. Well, there was there were handcuffs handcuffs with plastic zip ties. That's what is what it says. I was gonna say because the ones you get in those stores, they're not you know all that sturdy. It wouldn't be that hard to. I uh, need to shop at a different store. Well. <laughs> well, and they're designed to be released by you when you're coming. Yeah. With them. They have a safety latch on them. And... Exactly. Again, you're shopping at the wrong store. <laughs> hey man, I'm I'm a I'm a member of LA Police Gear. I actually buy stuff from them. So <laughs> brats are tricky little hobbits. I'm telling you. Uh, the um, bookstore has long been no, a we're subject. But <laughs> uh, there's no comeback I can say to that. <laughs> I know that's why I said it. Demonetized as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. If we ever got enough views to actually have a reason to be monetized in the first place, that might matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the bookstore has long been subject of neighborhood complaints and police attention. The Baltimore Sun reported that the sheriff's office had started conducting, quote, spot checks at the bookstore in late 2011, which periodically resulted in arrest of patrons for indecent exposure. One such check also found holes cut in the walls, mm -hmm. separating private viewing booths, a violation of the county's code. That's such a hey. Some shit. people fucking like that. Okay. Yeah. What? What the right? hell is wrong with it? These are all consenting adults. Like, if yeah, they want to, yeah, is a fucking thing. Like, yeah. there's places where people go in knowing they're going to be spied on because they get off on it. I don't think um, it, that those holes were were just for viewing. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it depends what height they're drilled yeah, at. I have a feeling they're a little lower than I height. Yeah. Um. That depends on your perspective. Hey, that's a kink too. I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't kink shame. Uh, quote, Stop really... kink shaming, Marilyn. Fuck. Quote, it really <laughs> deters other businesses, especially upscale businesses, from opening and really deters the revitalization process in that <coughs> area. That is according to John Paff, uh, the head of the Bush River Community Council, um, said to The Sun in 2012. A change.org petition launched in June 2020 demands that the county, quote, shut down this nuisance in our neighborhood. Uh, they were there first. That? Fuck you. It has thus far received 169 complaints. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's that's how I was giggling. I saw the yeah. one hundred and sixty-nine. Um, similar NIMBY complaints appear to have motivated the most recent raid on the Bush River Bookstore. NIMBY M I B Y is not in my backyard. Uh, yeah. 
well, you bought that fucking house, and I'm yeah. guessing that place was already there. Uh, quote, in the past several months, we have received an increased number of concerns and allegations of a wide variety of illegal activity occurring at the Bush River Books and Video, the sheriff's office said. Quote, we take all citizens' concerns seriously, and there's an active investigation into those concerns. You know, there's probably some actual crime out there that could, you know, maybe be better served for, uh, or as far as their time. That Why was the police you? chief that said that? The sheriff. The sheriff. Sheriff. Yeah. So, Tell me, it's not, it's not like plain vanilla sex without telling it's not me like, you it's only not like, ever have plain vanilla you know, sex. Yeah, it's not like Maryland has, like, record gun crime and violent crimes and murders right. and mm-hmm. all that stuff going on right now. Or, right? or, you know, lots of opiates on the streets and... Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, and this is all with, you know, the knowledge that a recent study came out that proved that uh, where there are adult oriented businesses, crime actually, uh, sexual crime actually drops in the surrounding area. Because there's an outlet. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually, they found that like in areas like in the UK and the US and Germany and everything else, wherever there's uh, strip clubs or adult stores or, or, you know, the adult theaters or um, brothels, the area directly around that has a very, very low sexual crime rate. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, well. the the arrest the arrested men have a trial date in August. Those charged with perverted sexual practice, however, may be able to get off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read that line again, just for good measure? <laughs> Those charged with perverted sexual practice, however. Might be able to get off. <laughs> ah, yes. yes. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> and those guys are like, finally. <laughs> Been handcuffed so long. <laughs> I mean, oh, you Lord. know, you Jay, know that those Jay words harder, were Daddy. chosen. Specifically for that reaction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2003's Lawrence v. Texas that sodomy laws criminalizing private sexual behavior were unconstitutional. Yeah. In 2020, Maryland's legislator also partially repealed the state's law criminalizing sodomy. <coughs> the text of the repeal bill, however, shows that it left in place various references to the state's criminal code to, quote, Unnatural or perverted sexual practice. Can you define, fucking define that, please? Yeah, like, That's what I was gonna say, Andrew. Define perverted. What is? It, it seems awfully fucking subjective. Like, maybe I think that fucking thirty years of missionary position, like your pathetic life, sheriff, is unnatural. Yep. Uh, Greg Nevins, senior counsel for the Lambda Legal a gay rights public interest law firm told the blade that the Lawrence ruling should offer protection to the men charged with committing sex acts in private locked video viewing booth comparing it to a couple having sex in a rented hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they paid money to rent the room. So yeah. Knowing what was there. Knowing what knowing was there, what would happen. and nobody's <laughs> being coerced or nobody's even coerced. That's that's yeah. a sen- that's essential. What the last paragraph of the article says, yeah. it says uh, from a libertarian case, and yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's no one was but, no one was uh, un unconsenting unconsenting to being handcuffed until the cops showed up. Right. So yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, then some of them might still have consented, but that's you can a, withdraw that's your consent different... at any time during the sex act. <laughs> yeah. Bring on the flu and hammer. <laughs> Pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like like Andrew said, what is the difference between them renting the the room at the adult bookstore to to do what they want to do? And going to these roadside motels that are covered in roaches and feces and that rent rooms by the hour for specifically that purpose. Turn on a black know, there's light no in there fucking and it looks difference. like a painting. Yep. Well, and, uh, and the only okay. difference is that one of those isn't happening in these stuck up prudes back fucking yard. Okay, there's there's yeah. a, a paragraph I want to read from the original article in the blade. Um, 
A friend of one of the arrested men told the Blade that his friend rented one of the store's private video rooms and was with another male friend inside the room when the sheriff's deputy, when the sheriff's deputies, quote, in full riot gear, unlocked his room and arrested him and his friend on a charge of indecent exposure. Yeah, what is indecent about it's that? Not, the door was locked. locked room. You unlocked it. <laughs> I have to wonder if it was a male and a female who were married to each other, who are just there to watch a dirty video together, mm -hmm. would they have charged them the same way? I have to wonder. No, probably not. No. Yeah, no. I sincerely doubt it. Yeah, no, this is, I mean, the just like most of these anti-sodomy and anti-perverse sexual conduct laws, they're not really about actual sodomy or actual perverse no. sexual conduct. No, they're what about they're, gay people. It, yeah, they're yeah. just about attacking anybody who's homosexual. That's what they're yeah. about attacking. Or anybody who's not like just 100% hetero. Yeah, yeah. that's right. They're, they're, but I mean, like homos the, uh, homosexual sex acts is what they're targeting. They're trying right. to target that because mm -hmm. it's that same thing as the legislating morality. And I hate to break it to a lot of people, but the people who've been in control of Maryland pretty much forever are, in fact, leftists. It is Democrats yeah. who passed those mm -hmm. laws. It's uh -huh. Democrats who pushed the most of those laws. Um, I mean, and even before that, a lot of those laws were written and used to punish people who were interracial couples uh -huh. and punish them because yeah, that was all. considered unnatural. So they could go after them. And again, yeah. it's the American political left that did that. They're not your friends. They're not your allies. Stop thinking that, oh, well, the Republicans are that. No, they're both no. terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another another paragraph from the original article on the blade. It says, uh, "Quote: During that operation, an undercover deputy entered the premise and observed a variety of illegal sexual activities that were occurring on the premises." Quote: The only Ill uh, the only sexual activity that should be illegal is one that is carried out against someone's will. Yes. Additionally, an additional undercover female deputy was approached and solicited for prostitution. Oh, okay, but she can say no. At the conclusion of that operation, nine individuals were charged. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, because I mean, and then on top of that, the, the solicitation thing is ridiculous, because what if he was soliciting her to appear in an adult video for mass distribution? At that point, it's yep. suddenly legal. Yep. 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 And there are plenty of websites that shoot inside adult theaters and stuff. Yeah. So and how do you know that that wasn't what he was doing? They should right? have been self-driving tests you could now. I was gonna say, hell, he could use that as a defense and walk. Yeah, if it even gets that point, which I doubt it will. But a lot of the shit's just gonna get fucking tossed. It was a yeah, waste of time is... and waste of energy. Yeah, this is morality, uh, local I... morality police using real police to be morality police. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I hope they all get off. <laughs> Me too. Me Everybody too. deserves to get off. Everybody needs to get off here. Yeah. That's uh, uh, so. You're saying you hope there's a. Happy ending? Yes. <laughs> I like happy endings. <laughs> we'll Usually have to follow this to story so we time. can be there for the climax. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they have cameras uh, as they walk out of the courtroom so we get the money shot. Yeah, right. Won't that come after? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> he should always come after she does. <laughs> This is why I'm not allowed in polite company. <laughs> None of us like, are allowed in fucking polite boring. company. Yeah. I hate normies, man. Normies are so boring. <laughs> this is why we're friends, really. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking morality police. I know, and it's uh, it just shit like that. And then they're the not in my backyard. Well, I'm not against it, just not in my neighborhood. Like, yeah, it's, what's uh, that's, there's uh, values. Um, what's the other, the other version of that one? Is uh, I can't see it from my house. Yeah. Ugh. Well, except that that one doesn't even work here because you couldn't fucking see it until the cops <laughs> unlocked the damn door. <laughs> yeah. Knowing what's happening behind a door is not the same as you being fucking exposed to it. Yeah. So. And we're exposed. I mean, you don't even want to know what happens behind doors in my house. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I think most houses you probably we do. actually don't want to know. I mean, there may be I don't want to know what's there. happening behind most of the doors in my house. <laughs> 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 There's got to be like. 
like they were in the act. I mean, that's that's, I mean, that's like thin blue line balls. Yeah, yeah. It's, li- it's literally it's literally cop blocked. It's yep. literally cop blocked. blocked. Yep. That's uh, yeah. Uh, can you imagine having blue balls for days because you got locked in jail? I mean, well, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities in jail if you're willing. I mean, probably. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's showers you can jack off in if you have to. Just well, yeah. that's, I, 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 I would uh, contest that that does not necessarily always remediate blue balls. Oh, I see. Now you guys are the experts on that. I don't. Because for Sometimes me, it takes the edge off, but it really doesn't. You think they um got to keep the handcuffs? Asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, unfortunately. <laughs> But do you think they got a cavity search when they were processed <laughs> in the jail? Can that you might imagine, help. Can you imagine that happening? Situation. Like, I don't know, officer. I mean, I might be hiding something. You might need to, might need to look. So that's just... the thing is <laughs> you guys can't do that to each other consensually behind a closed and locked fucking door. But come in here and drop your trousers. We're going to do it to you. And now it's legal, even though it's without your consent. Well, at okay. that point, many of them might be consenting just it just just to it, alleviate it, their it, frustration. Use two fingers, please, and when you get in there, get up. You feel that? <laughs> I'll push yeah. it just a little bit. <laughs> push right there. <laughs> just uh, stroke it a little bit uh, of <laughs> a little bit of pressure, a little bit of stroking. <laughs> a little bit to the left. Maybe <laughs> dinner and phone call, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, afterwards, one of the, the can you the, can you switch to the nightstick? <laughs> One of the perps is like trying to cuddle with the cop. That's what I was gonna say. Are we gonna cuddle? <laughs> if you're still listening to us, I'm sorry. I mean, man, that's how I get. That's if how I get out. If you're still listening to us, we know you're just as sick as we are. Yeah. So. But I mean, that's how I get out of like getting searched and going through airports by a TSA really quickly and easily. Is that I always ask for the pat down instead of going through the scanner and then moan loudly and make direct eye contact with the guy who's doing it the whole time and then he's yeah. just like i don't i don't even want it just go just <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like, don't file that away for later i mean <laughs> you run the army you've played gay chicken <laughs> i mean any civilian who thinks there's a lot of gay shit in sports dude the army oh there's so much gay shit <laughs> <laughs> And Derek was in the Navy. I'm just yeah, <laughs> yeah. even more gay shit. Actually, you know what? In the Navy, not as much because people who are in the Navy are so aware of that fucking stigma. They're like extra careful to fucking avoid it. You know what I mean? For the most part, I'm not saying people don't still get busted doing shit. <laughs> it's not. They call it a hot rack for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. I think they only do that in submarines now. Yeah, they're full of semen. Yeah, <laughs> loving hard and full of semen. Ah, uh, yes, the the legendary semen gurgle. Uh, who? <laughs> Dude, there was a girl in my fucking boot camp division. No shit on her name tag. Her name was Gussler. Ouch. She's semen Gussler. <laughs> Oof. Yes. Oh, good times. That's uh, that sounds like what you would get the, on like a, a cheap porn like outfit or like one of those outfits. You know those adult outfits you get. They're the sexy, <laughs> like, yeah. sexy sailor, and it like something like, something bought at this adult bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see the the picture? There's a picture going around right now of a guy who from Space Force, and his last name is Kirk. And everyone's like, if he doesn't make captain, so fucking help me. What's yeah, happening? no shit. <laughs> if I was him, I'd be playing for a commission. Yeah, now. Be, be <laughs> yeah. I actually knew somebody uh, in the army who uh, she was. Her last name was Sanders, and she got promoted and got made a full colonel. Nice. And she was like all excited, and then she's like, "Oh Holy God, shit, I'm Colonel Sanders. I'm Colonel San. God damn it." <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. All right, you want to talk about another woman that was fucked by the police? Um, do we have to? But yeah, sure. 
Uh, police seize gun CCW permit from Warren woman who called for help. I Let's saw go. this one. This oh, one I, I actually was... have a, a quick update at the end of it after we go through okay, it. This is and a... see, I never read the story so that I can just oh, react no, authentically to them. I saw this one when it happened. and yeah. Oh. Yeah, This is out of uh, Warren, Ohio. A uh, Warren woman who called the police to remove a man from her home was cited for failing to tell the officers that she had a gun in her purse. What the police fuck? police say they seized the concealed carry permit and handgun of Ashley High School after she had called the officers to remove a man who was at her Commerce Street townhouse early Tuesday. But officers if you tell them you have a gun, they get trigger happy and then they fucking kill you. Well, yeah, but, yeah. Well, the, problem, has the problem is, is Ohio is a, a duty to inform state. Duty to inform state. Like yeah. Minnesota. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. Officers arrested the man after confirming high school claim that he is wanted on a warrant. Uh, one of the officers also asked dispatchers about the 33 year old woman and discovered high school had a permit to carry a concealed weapon. When the officers asked her about the permit, she showed him a nine millimeter handgun she carried in her purse. Asked why she didn't tell the officers that she had a gun as required under Ohio law and taught in CCW classes. High school said that she didn't know she had to do that uh, and that she didn't remember much about the classes. Police issued a summons to high school who appeared in Warren Municipal Court to answer a charge of failure to notify. The officers also took high school's gun and permit. Yeah, so Ohio is a is a duty to inform state, meaning that if you have an interaction with police and you are a concealed carry weapons uh, permit holder who has a concealed weapon, you are required by law to notify the cop that you have the firearm. Where the rub on this case is, this She's ties in into home. kind of my update. Yes, she was in her home, and the law in Ohio specifically mentions that you do not have to inform police about weapons in your home. So if she was at home with her concealed weapon in her bag, this is a bullshit charge. And she yes. wasn't even carrying her bag. It was like sitting on her kitchen counter, yep. right? Like mine always yep. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Which means that she legally under the law and it is spelled out in Ohio law that you do not need yeah. to inform police about the weapons in your home. Therefore they should not have charged her at all under the law. So right. it's good that but she cops pled not guilty. don't know the fucking law, do they? Nope. No. And they have, and they have every legal right to lie to you about what the law actually says. And trying to, to assume that the law. you don't know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're required to know the law. They, the, poli the police who use violence to enforce the law are not required to actually know the law. Right. Yep. So because isn't that one fun? They figure they'll just sort it out in court. Yeah. Or that's the, way, that's the way it's supposed to work. But then you get shot over something that, you know, wasn't your fault and wasn't actually illegal. Yeah. Also, um... Just so everybody knows, uh, uh, Firearms Policy Coalition did, in fact, uh, they are currently reaching out to the woman and her lawyer to assist in the case. Good. Nice. Good. FPC, you can pick up one of these phenomenal flags. You, yep, you can pick up the flag. You cannot pick up their patches or their stickers anymore because those were limited in run and sold out right before I ordered one. I'm a little bitter. <laughs> but, you know, aside... Go the early and, bird gets the worm, Andrew. That's right. Um, if you have spare money, go and join up at FPC. They do some phenomenal work. We're not sponsored by them or anything, but Andrew and I are both members. And uh, me and Jason are both followed by them on Twitter. Yes. Nice. Uh, the flag behind Christopher is a FPC flag. The fuck you know if you're listening. It's uh, big ra big rattlesnake says fuck you no no. And then at the bottom yes. in parentheses it has FPC. Yeah. You yeah. see it's the like a redo uh, of Gadsden. The video yeah. the video from the um, uh, yellow vest Ireland anti coronavirus lockdown. No step on snake in the and video. No step on snake. One of the person one of the people's wearing a no step no step on snake flag. <laughs> fuck, Ireland's cool. about to get fucking lit, lads. Because it's between Britain having violated Good Friday and then now the fact that the Irish are just at the end of their rope with the fucking lockdown shit. Oh, it is going to get real <laughs> interesting soon. There's some spicy boys there that are really <laughs> And like, it's not um, like Ireland doesn't have recent fucking experience with. Wasn't the anniversary of the Trump just a few days ago? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and again, uh, keep in mind that Good Friday was signed in 1997. So it is not all that old. And uh, there are still IRA weapons factories all over the place. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that comment for. <laughs> leave that one for offline. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that conversation. I've had a conversation with people about it. I'm just going to. Brandenburg. <laughs> Oh no, the Brandenburg would not cover that one. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> Loose lips and chips, as in, as we often yeah. say. Yeah. Well, all right, let's let's get on to a, a serious one. And this one, uh, this one, this uh, Derek is gonna be angry about this one. Well, not a not about what happened. It's about what was acceptable before uh-huh. this happened. Are, are we going from police to police story here? Yeah, Illinois. Okay. Illinois is the first state in the United States to ban police from lying to minors during interrogations. That shouldn't even be. It shouldn't be a thing. They can yeah. they can lie to adults, but they can't. They can no longer lie to minors in Illinois. Just just for for just for a second, just think and and realize that this was so prevalent. That it became yep. an issue to the point that politicians wrote and passed a law against the police, mind you, yep. that banned them from doing something that had to be at least common practice. Yeah. Oh, Un- yeah. Fucking believable. Police lying to whoever they're interrogating, regardless of age, has been a well-known common practice for oh, decades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, I know the, that. The worst part is, is, is it doesn't go into effect till January 1st. What so, that? Why do they do that? Delayed effect. Arbitrary. Fucking. Yeah. Uh, we need to make sure that right the, fucking now. How yeah, hard they, is that? We need to make sure <laughs> that they're trained so they know that they're no longer allowed to lie. To <laughs> Not kids. only that, they, I feel like they d- were trained that way before you trained them the other way. Well, and it's so not we just it's, stop fucking training them to lie to people. Yeah, maybe this problem fixes itself. Maybe. But I was going to say, it's not, I mean, not even that it should be, you know, go into effect immediately. It should be retroactive for the last 50 years. (laughs) Yeah. And every cop who's done it should be fucking punished and lose their goddamn badge. Yeah. Uh, Illinois Governor J.B. Britsker, uh, Democrat. On Thursday, signed the nation's first from law Illinois. Ban- no, yes. no, there's really no exactly. right. <laughs> uh, First, banning law enforcement from lying and deploying other deceptive practices when interrogating minors. The ban, which goes into effect January 1st, prohibits tactics like falsely promising leniency and claiming that incriminating evidence exists when it does not. It shows. The I don't states- even know how that's ever even been a fucking thing. Oh my god, that makes me so oh, mad. Oh, yeah, the 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 article mentions, and I've heard this before. The Innocence Project, which is based here yes. in Wisconsin, yes, uh, it's called Illinois for years the false confession capital of the United States. Yes. God. Well, and the Innocence wrong. Project, man, their stuff is they're just, legit. Yeah, they're legit. Um, it shows that the state's recognition of the quote need to change laws that have failed the people they serve. You think? Yeah. Uh, using Not deceptive... just failed, fucking victimized. <laughs> yeah. Using deceptive tactics during interrogations is generally permitted in the United States, but the practice often Not leads just to permitted, false confessions. It's fucking encouraged. Minors, yeah. who some studies show, are two to three times as likely to give a false confession as adults are particularly vulnerable. No shit. But here, mm-hmm. okay. You know, so if you lie to them, you're obstructing a police investigation, and they can slap extra charges on you for that. Yes. Yes. But if they lie, they're obstructing their own fucking investigation. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I I hammer it into my kids, even my youngest. If you are ever don't fucking by talk a cop, to the cops. You say two things and two things only while you are still a minor. You say parent, lawyer. That's it. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, for once you're an adult, the only word that comes out of your mouth is lawyer. Lawyer. Yep. Yep. Uh, the bill was one of four criminal justice laws that 
uh, Pritzker signed on Thursday, which she said would, quote, advance the rights of our most vulnerable. The other bills address mass incarceration through efforts that include using restorative justice practices, such as um, mediation and making it easy for courts to reduce sentences after convictions. Hang on, hang on. Advance the rights of our most vulnerable. Myers. But every time I talk to a fucking statist, they say cops are there to protect our most vulnerable, and that's why we need them and the fucking government. Oh, just mm-hmm. hold, hold on, hold on, dial it, dial it back just a little bit. All right, sorry. And, sorry. and no, 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 it's it's start <laughs> pushing that. Tur- hold the finger on the turbo button because you're gonna you're gonna explode in a second. <laughs> hold on, it gets better, is what he said. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I can't. No, I can't sure. even lie on this one. I can't even joke around on this. this one. This does not get better. Uh, Cook County. Sh- State's attorney, Kim Fox, whose, ju- whose jurisdiction includes Chicago, supported the new limits on police interrogation. Quote, we continue to work to correct the wrongs of the past. Wrongs inflicted by law enforcement, including prosecutors, she said in a statement. Minors and other vulnerable people, such as those with intellectual disabilities, are particularly harmed by deceptive tactics, says David Selinsky, a Stanford law professor and co-director of the Stanford Criminal Justice Center. You think? The, well, I mean, keep in mind, too, it, it, through all this, that Illinois also had to basically be forced to start recording the results of interrogations until the Innocence Project went at them for that. They oh, didn't even just, do that either. Yeah. I'll, just, mm-hmm. Two paragraphs here. Okay, hold it. Uh, Terrell Swift, who alleges he was con- he was coerced by Chicago police into giving a false confession when he was 17, said in a press conference Thursday that the bill, quote, could have saved my life. Swift, who was sentenced to 30 years in prison after being wrongfully convicted of rape and murder of a woman, spent 15 and a half years behind bars. He was later exonerated by DNA evidence. Police deployed a, quote, series of lies against him, Swift said, adding that law enforcement told him he told him to falsely admit that he was hiding someone. Yeah. Uh, fucking. Solansky said the United States, unlike other liberal democracies, has a, quote, long tradition of favoring interrogation tactics that are designed to trick people into confessing. It's almost like they don't give a shit about getting the right guy. They just give a shit about getting a guy. Yes. Uh, well, that's quote, exactly yeah, it. quote, there are countless television shows <laughs> and movies in which heroic police officers yep. solve cases by cleverly tricking the people that they're interrogating into, impl- into implicating themselves. Lance I was said. just going to bring that up, too. Yeah. That, like, that's, adding, it's always portrayed as yeah. this wonderful tactic in yeah. TV adding shows. Adding that such portrayals glorified tactics that will soon be illegal in Illinois tactics mm-hmm. that should never have existed to begin with yeah uh although yep. proponents of the practice believe that guilty people will ad- uh, admit to crimes and innocent people will not decades of evidence suggest that such deceptive pr- de- such deceptive tactics lead to false confessions in 1983 for instance two half brothers with intellectual disabilities were wrongfully convicted in the rape and murder of an 11 year old girl the brothers who were 19 and 15 at the time were confessed or were coerced into a false confession. A North Carolina and jury in May awarded them $75, $75 million in damage for the decades they spent imprisoned. Yeah, and that money might be nice so they don't have to work and they can live comfortably, but it doesn't give them back their no. lives. Yeah, no. um, Swift goes on to say, uh, well, one day in that, prison been... wrongfully is too long. They've yeah. been in prison for so long, you can't tell me they're not institutionalized. Well, right. I mean, and the taxpayers just footed that fucking bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the um, the Innocence Project brings up, in Illinois alone, there have been 100 wrongful convictions predicated on false confessions, including 31 involving people under 18 that Jeez. they've found so far. Unbelievable. And this is... I just, just... This was so prevalent... So prevalent and so widespread and accepted that it wasn't until it became an actual issue of people getting out of jail that it attracted enough attention that the politicians stepped in and passed the law. 
Well, keep in mind that the youngest person ever executed in the United States was most likely executed based on a coerced confession. He was 14. Right. Okay. Well, and that was, you've got that was during got, uh, Jim Crow, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you've got Emmett, these kids. Emmett something that, or other. Yeah. Yeah. Emmett Till. Emmett, Emmett Till. Yeah. I think. Electric you've got chair. you've got a lot of kids mm-hmm. out there that, you know, their parents have told them. For years, for decades, parents have been telling their kids, oh, the police are just there to help. It's okay. And then right. Trust they the just police. happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then they get put in these rooms and don't know. And they get the- literally fucking terrorized yes. by the mm-hmm. people they were told to trust. Yep. And they mm-hmm. will do anything to get out of it because they have been so fucking frightened. About what will happen to them if they don't confess. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, mm-hmm. a, if a cop says, well, we got you on video doing this and this and that and this, you're going to go to the electric chair or you can take this plea deal. I mean, if you're 14, 15, 16 years old, you're scared of fucking dying. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we'll, you know, I'll confess. Well, and- I mean, and keep in mind, too, that this this includes them not being able to give false promises of leniency. It specifically uh-huh. calls that mm-hmm. out, which means they were also saying, well, if you just admit this to me, you know, you'll you'll only get a you, you'll yeah. only get a slap on the wrist and then you'll walk. So, I mean, they were doing that so much and then yep. turning around and an and adult knows that him. that's an adult knows that that's not up to the fucking cops. Yeah. That's right. up to the fucking jury and the judge the pro- and the sentencing, yeah. you know, Pros- that's, prosecutors. And the prosecutors. Yeah. Well, the prosecutor prosecutors. can recommend, but the judge can ignore. Right. Right. And has. There have definitely been cases where that's occurred. Right. Um, my my yeah. own plea deal, I was recommended no jail time, and the judge gave me 120 days anyway. <laughs> so. Well, that's like there's the that case out of, I think it was out in Montana, where a guy pled guilty to um, sexual assault of a minor, first degree and sexual assault of a minor. And the prosecutor recommended he get the full sentence and the judge let him off with like 60 days in jail and a fine. Well, yeah, that's like the the Stanford rape case here. The the kid raped the uh, unconscious woman next to a trash can. He got he got sentenced to six months, right? Did like yeah. three and a half months and got out because of overcrowding and all this other bullshit. Right. Because it yep. was going to ruin his future if they yeah. did the yep. whole. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, the Business Insider article on this also mentions similar legislation was approved by state lawmakers in Oregon and just uh, awaits Governor Kate Brown's signature. And New York legislators introduced a bill banning deceptive interrogation tactics and establishes a court review of recorded confessions to determine if they should be used in court. Ooh, I like Fuck that. Kate Brown. You know, yeah, yeah, I like that last I, section no, there I would, in the New York. I one. would no, not even if she was in the adult bookstore. <laughs> not even through a glory hole, all right? That's, uh... <laughs> not even with somebody else's dick, right, guys? Yo, well, I mean, if it was somebody I really didn't like, I mean, there's opportunity there. But... There, there are people, but uh... <laughs> maybe with Joe Biden. Yeah, you'd have to give him like four little blue pills, and he'd die part way through. Actually, that might be kind of funny, but. <laughs> Make them do it on the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the fact that like there are two other states that are having to do this, too, like that it's so common. The, fa- the fact that it's even necessary is appalling. It's yeah. so yeah, freaking the, the common. Fall, yeah, the, that's what that's what I was getting at. The fact that the um, the practice exists in the first place. It's like and that they all think that this is justified somehow. Mm-hmm. Not only justify, but it's like it's encouraged. Practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I I have a friend who he got out of it because he saw how bad shit was getting as a cop. But he said even going through the criminal justice program at one of the local tech schools, that it is an actual chapter in their book that covers deceptive interrogation practices. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's think about like if you ever watch CSI or NCIS or any of these other shows, think of how many times you've seen where they fake DNA evidence to trick people. And even in those shows to trick kids into admitting things and they lie to them. And it's like supposed to be justified because, well, you know, but we got our man. No, you got. But did you really? 
If you yeah, have you a coerced confession and you don't have fucking real evidence, do you really like you don't know that you got the right person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Innocent until proven guilty, unless we can lie to them and and trick them into false confessing. In which case, they don't need to be guilty. We got a confession. Well, you know, and there's yeah. this culture problem in the United States with this cop worship where, I mean, people on the right and left are convinced that innocent until proven guilty isn't really a thing. You're guilty if you're accused until you're well, proven innocent, just that's automatically. What, that, that's what all civil mm-hmm. asset forfeiture is. Yep. Yeah. Right? It's, it's and they'll yeah. celebrate it. And then additionally that, like the, the guilty until proven innocent, that's why they that's why they arrest you first. They arrest yeah. you and book you and then you have to bail out. Right. That's yeah. that's guilty until proven innocent. They're supposed to have grounds, solid grounds to be able to arrest you. But these days, the bar for that is so fucking low. Andrew, a cop saying he smelled marijuana mm-hmm. in your fucking car. Uh, reason- yeah. Reasonable suspicion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The or the um the the fact that they can hold you for 48 hours without even charging you with anything and no yeah. intention of doing so. They yeah. can just throw you in jail for two days. Yeah. Like yeah. there are people who lose their jobs over that. Right. And yeah. you don't because even get everybody can just put their life on hold for two fucking days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's when I when I got arrested in Georgia, I even demanded a lawyer immediately and got laughed at by the jailers. So, you know, uh, that was also very entertaining. Um, the ultimate result of that, obviously, uh, was incredibly satisfying. <laughs> Spoiler alert, the cops and the courts did not win that. But <laughs> still, like, I mean, well, and that's... And, and side note, Andrew is no longer allowed in the state of Georgia. Yeah. I can go back to the state of Georgia. I was just kicked out initially. Oh. I just was forced to leave. Why would anyone want to go to Georgia? Did you tell them I That's was passing through question. anyways? I was about to fucking leave. Well, yeah, that, that was me. my point, too, was, you know, you guys, I was trying to leave. I was near, I was within 10 minutes of the border with North Carolina. You guys I was stopped me. Passing through your stupid <laughs> fucking state. Oh, my God, leave me alone. <laughs> like, I was trying to leave. Yeah. It that's... doesn't take that long to drive through Georgia, okay? I'm just going to say, Georgia's like maybe three hours from north to south. Port. It's not a huge fucking state. I've well, yeah, driven through it's... it multiple times. Yeah, I was going from I was going from <coughs> Benning to Bragg, so it's not that huge a drive to get through Georgia. But, like, I'm in the North Georgia mountains. It's like, I am right by the fucking border. It is right there. South Carolina was just... <laughs> Well, North Carolina is right there because North Carolina oh, is right, here, right, right. Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia. They all come together right in that little corner. And that's where right. I was. Yeah. Right. I was South right Carolina is narrower than North Carolina. Yeah, I was right there. And I was I was literally if they had waited 15 minutes, I would no longer have been in Georgia anyway. You wouldn't have been their fucking problem. Anymore. <laughs> all they had to do was mind their goddamn fucking business. Yeah, that's all they had yeah. to do. But no, 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 not those cops. I remember calling calling my uh, CO and being like, "Help me! I'm in hillbilly hell." <laughs> <laughs> there are banjos in every cell. Help me! Yeah, it was pretty much. Just, <laughs> there was a guy. There was a guy in my cell block, and I was only there for the one night. But there was a guy in my cell block who was like from like Eastern Kentucky. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody from Eastern Kentucky, but that dude was like yelling at somebody. And and he's and even people from the North Georgia mountains are going, no one can fucking understand you. (laughs) Yeah. The boys and I stayed the night in Eastern Kentucky on our, our trip last summer, right after we left Virginia, we went into Kentucky. Yeah. It's just, you're like, what? It's like well, trying to listen to Farmer well, Frank after West the Virginia, Waterboy. through West Virginia, then Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like um, if you've if you've watched uh, Clarkson's Farm on Amazon Prime, the the one guy that comes and helps with his stone wall, who's from like some really rural part of Northern England, and he's just oh, and Clarkson's just like, oh yeah, mm. it's like and the dude like, from Joe Dirt, from <laughs> Joe Dirt. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, do you like to see I thought he's naked. First person yeah. that popped into my mind was Farmer Fran. From the water bowl. Yeah, like, that's oh, exactly right. what that Kentucky dude sounded like. I mean, it's like, like, it's like, boom. Boom. It's like boom Hour with marbles in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just <laughs> unintelligible. And of course, he was yelling, and it's like, what? 
All was right. that worse? All right, let's get, let's, let's get on to this other one. It's uh, yeah, Segway, Redneck area, or, or Hillbilly area, um, doesn't make sense, and military all tied into one. Nice. Right. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Exclusive congressional the Republican. Segway trifecta. Congressional yeah. Republicans seek to give Biden war powers for Cuba. Oh, oh my. Didn't we try this once? God. <laughs> I uh, am the Senate. <laughs> Uh, I'm just yeah. saying. So, okay, so that's 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 the military angle, right? Biden shouldn't even have powers in <laughs> fucking World of Warcraft. <laughs> All right, so that's so that's that's the military angle, and it doesn't make sense angle, and then the Biden should not be, be allowed to play freaking Starcraft or M- Mario Kart with his grandkids. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, West Virginia GOP Representative Alex Mooney is planning to introduce a new congressional joint resolution to grant President Joe Biden. The ability to use war powers to deliver humanitarian aid to Cuba amid growing unrest in the country. Uh, as, we, as, as we all know, you know airstrikes are. I'm just, I'm very just saying. I'm just saying. You know what? Be fantastic humanitarian aid to Cuba. Not fucking making war with them. Uh, or the embargoes. Removing the yeah, embargoes. The embargoes. Yeah, you know the, the thing embargoes. is, those embargoes never made any sense to me either because the it's all like, the it's embargo. Like, it's, it's like the, the, the whole thing about. Oh, we don't need a tax rebate. Just stop fucking taxing people so much. Yeah, they, right. well, you know, and the, but the the embargoes they never made sense because the embargo only really re- served to reinforce Castro's power. Right, it insulated yeah, a they, communist I, dictatorship they, from they outside just, influence. Look at what's happened in China for the most part with where how how hardcore communist it was compared to now. That's what that's what they um uh the the White House the Pent- or, yeah the White House just the other day, and in regards to this whole Cuba thing, instituted more embargoes on like three or four members of the Cuban government. Like, cause that's really gonna fucking change yeah, things. That'll the harder you fucking fight and squeeze commies, the more galvanized you make them in their fucking beliefs. Just let yes. them have their fucking way. Their shit'll fall apart and they'll all starve to death. All you well, have to do is get out of their way, and they'll fucking cut their own throat. All right, so, well, okay. the thing, the only people who are hurt by the embargoes are the Cuban people, who don't necessarily want a communist government anyway. Even if a lot of them did at one time, they right. haven't for quite some time. Most Cubans right. do not like the yeah. what well, it's uh, not che, even. Is che it still is dead. Castro? Che is dead. Well, it's he's, he's yeah. Not... I mean. Well, and it's what it's Raul, right? Raul Castro is the uh, one who stepped mm. down last year or year before Somebody last. Somebody else. They, okay. have, they have they have an actual elected, quote unquote, elected. <laughs> elected. <laughs> elected. <laughs> my fucking yeah. ass. <laughs> if you've ever played Tropico, the game Tropico, you know how. Does it? Works. I've seen Tropic Thunder. Does that count? Oh. Don't no, the Kims it, keep getting elected in North yeah, Korea? Yeah, one hundred percent of the vote. It's amazing. <laughs> Um, let's wow, see. Uh, wow, they're popular. <laughs> uh, image of, images of the resolution reviewed by the American conservative show that, quote, the authorization for use of military force against Cuba to ensure the delivery of humanitarian aid, that's the longest fucking retarded sentence ever, has three specific goals. One, ensure the delivery of humanitarian aid to the people of Cuba, including but not limited to food, water, and medicine. Wait, why do you need war power acts to do that? Don't we have any humanitarian aid power? Hold on, hold on. Uh, (laughs) Two, create a safe zone in Cuba for the Cuban people to safely receive humanitarian aid. And three, quote, prevent humanitarian aid from being stolen by the Cuban government or its forces. That's why you need war powers. And that is the real plan here. This is a backdoor. Yep, this yeah. is a backdoor. And gosh, where yep. would they start delivering the humanitarian aid from? And where would they create that safe zone? Do we have somewhere uh, already like, established in Cuba? I, I, I feel, I, I feel like, like there might be some terrorists bay, there or something. There, there's that... a bay right there with a, a, a big military base that has... Guacamole, yeah. right? Wait, yeah, yeah Guacamole like Bay. That and it's, and right. it is known for its humanitarian ways. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. So it's, they oh, make yeah. sure everybody's hydrated. We've and never fed. mistreated and anyone fed. there. Yeah. They, I mean, we made sure everybody was fed. We made sure they're all very, very hydrated. Very hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> very humanitarian. Inside and out. Yeah, yeah. very humanitarian. Uh, 
Moody's yeah. office stated that, quote, the congressman hasn't introduced the legislation related to Cuba. If he does introduce legislation, we'll be happy to comment at the time. Our office doesn't comment on hypothetical legislation. But the legislation exists. Yeah. Um, congressional Republicans have also held separate virtual member level meetings regarding how to respond to the protest in Cuba and have invited representatives of large corporations to them. Emails also reviewed by the American Conservative show an official official from Senator Rick Scott's office. You know, uh, it's coordinated almost like involving on July 19th large corporations is just the way to get through. To <laughs> with, oh, with members of Congress and representatives with Amazon, Facebook, Google, Verizon, and the Wireless Communications Trade Association. <laughs> so here's here's why this is so hilarious. Here's if anybody doesn't know history, let me let me rewind the clock back about sixty years. For you to pre Castro, keep it well, brief. seventy years. Keep it brief, Andrew. So, so Concise. before Castro yeah. took over, Batista was in charge of he's Cuba. Gonna, he's going to go on to basically fascist, and he was basically fascist. <laughs> and Cuba was known as America's playground, and because the authoritarian government exercised so much control, all these U.S. corporations and businesses and everything else absolutely dominated cuba and yeah. didn't give anything to the cuban people like they didn't employ cuban people they did nothing yeah. and now as we talk about the castro regime havana falling, was like south miami yeah i mean the, yeah. and it was it's only what like 50 52 miles off the keys or something like that yeah you can yeah. you can yeah. take a, a not even particularly large boat from one to the other fairly easily and people do like boats made out of tires and things because you know communism so great they'll when they, throw themselves on improvised go, boats yeah they go north yeah. with those not to, yeah to go yeah. across <laughs> shark infested waters to get yeah. away from yeah. communism but the but what's funny about it what, what makes me laugh so hard is that the whole reason for the communist revolution really was because you know, communism is the 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 political goals of the envious. So all these people didn't have anything. They couldn't get anything because of all these American corporations dominating so completely. And so then there's the communist revolution. So as soon as the communist revolution is possibly over and we're able to go back in immediately, they're including Bring the all corporations, of corporations back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, sources detailed that senators spoke to companies from Silicon Valley to see what was technically feasible as far as getting internet access into cuba quote if the people of cuba can see the outpouring of support they have from the united states and the world they can see the atrocities happening in that country the further will be to toppling to toppling that regime the we already said. have internet connection to cuba there are cubans <laughs> with internet access don't ask me how i know that but i can just guarantee not a you, lot of them i've seen yeah, the, i've seen the videos i'm and just like saying, and yeah Tommy, Commies always cut their people off from cultures from anywhere that's yeah. more capitalist yeah. than them. Well, and that's yeah. why. Like, yeah, that's that's that why the embargo was. There's yeah, that it, thing going around where you can donate old USB drives that'll be loaded with American media and smuggled into North Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. They do those with mm -hmm. uh, balloons. They hang them from balloons and launch yeah. them and hit them balloons yeah. over the over the border. But uh, ah. if the people of Cuba can see the outpouring of support they have from the United States, the embargoes mm. have been in place for what, like? 50 years and you know what's crazy though Cubans is that if have you... zero fucking cultural reference points for what they're going to be faced with if well you know the, the, the thing is but the thing is too though is like well actually they have quite a few but you know what's really weird what i've always thought was interesting is the photos of the cuban protests a lot of them are carrying american flags yes mm -hmm. and that they, they where have, did they get they those have stuff, they have stuff and people in america in who are protesting yeah. wear fucking Che shirts you know, yeah. We have, we have an article. Hold on to that thought. We have an article about that after this. Or my favorite one was uh, one of the people that my sister Tammy took a selfie with in Minneapolis during everything <coughs> last summer. She was wearing her, you know, pride shirt and whatever. The guy she took a picture with, yeah, wearing a Chinese flag as a t shirt. <laughs> Like, I've seen what? I've seen the uh, the the um, the picture of Che the, the face of Che mm -hmm. on on pride shirts. I was gonna say I, oh, I yeah. actually saw a guy a photo of that Which with El Che so... who said to execute homosexuals. <laughs> I know it just it blows me away when they put his face on pride shirts. Like That's how what? are you even that me up. ignorant? Do you even know who that is? No, they don't. The thing is, is they know a very high level. Like 
they know they less know than the Wikipedia. A famous revolutionary. Yeah. That's all yeah. they fucking know. They don't even know the cliff notes. They know less than yeah. that, but they know, know, oh, well, he's a revolutionary. And so that's why they embrace him. Yeah. They have yeah. no idea who okay. he actually was. Um, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy announced last week that Mooney, that's the guy that introduced the bill in, in West Virginia, would be among those Republicans placed on the, quote, leader's advisory team on Cuba. And Mooney's office would have been, or would, office has been actively courting other Republicans to support the resolution, including Florida reps Mario Diaz Barrett, Maria Salazar, Wait. and Senator Marco Rubio. So and this just, guy's I mean, name is McCarthy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Kevin, yes, Kevin, Mac- so Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, he's from communism. he's from, he's yes. actually from Southern California. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just him dealing with communism. That couldn't go wrong. <laughs> uh, those emails uh, reveal that Diaz Bart's office opposed the measure with one official writing that the Republican does quote not trust the Biden administration because they would only prop up the Cuban regime with his aid. Well, one. Uh, so we're gonna two. have McCarthy bookends on this whole Cuban saga. <laughs> one end I the mean, other. pretty. At least this one isn't from here, but because the last Senator McCarthy was from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. At least this one's California. But uh, no, it, I mean, I just want to point out this is a GOP guy who wants to hand Biden war powers against cuba and as we all know the democrats historically dealing with communism have such a great track record you know the well, and, pigs and vietnam right. and so this guy thinks he's Afghanistan. Slick, right he's yeah. gonna put it on Korea. put it on the fucking desk he's gonna slide it in as humanitarian but he's hoping that the next fucking president is gonna be a right winger and mm-hmm. this is going to be the end to have boots on the ground, fucking crush Cuban communism, right? Yep. So he's you know he thinks he's fucking slick, but he's not. You know what? What would work is see. I mean, because I saw another GOP lawmaker advocating for airstrikes in Cuba. You know, and I think, wow, that that's <laughs> never been tried before. Maybe that will work. You know what else we could do? And I realize this is a revolutionary idea, but no, we could get a bunch of Cuban expats together, and we could like train them yeah right have the cia train them and then we could land them somewhere in an amphibious let's assault name them something uh, like like let's call them something that sounds like one of the great there, there's just there's this kind, really, there's like, this really cool video game from like the mid 19 or 1990s called contra uh, it, it's yeah, it, sound, yeah. it sounds like you know they could be named after that well uh, you it's, know it's you just know, a cool and, name but where would they land? You know, I think if Country they landed, is a cool name. if they if they landed maybe in a in like a bay or something that had something to do with farm animals, that yeah. I mean, that would yeah. be the ideal, I think. And how could that ever go wrong? Because I've never heard of anything like that being yeah. done before. So there's no <laughs> way we could know if it would go wrong. Yeah, it's, it would work great. We I'm could, pretty sure. You know, you know what could happen is like you could. You could have some sort of flight over the island and and have the military shoot that flight down, like an empty flight, right? And have the military shoot that flight down, and then they can blame it on the Cuban government. And and, and the people will support a and fucking the people, military and the, some people will, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Or new or, you stuff, know, man. Cutting edge. Here's a, here's yes. just, I, I've got it. I've got the answer. We're going to take... And recommission an old diesel destroyer. Ooh, there you go. Oh. And we're going to sail it through the strait between the Keys and Cuba. Oh. And then we're going to pay the Haitians to shoot a missile at it, but then blame the Cubans. Very clever, oh, Christopher. Yeah. No one would ever see that coming. No. It was completely clever. unprecedented. Yeah. yeah, the uh, the liberty that we could bring to Cuba would be just... <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> on Thursday, the Biden administration announced that it was placing sanctions on Cuban Minister of Defense, Avaro Lopez Mira, and the Cuban Ministry of the Interior. Woo! Yeah, what uh, what is quote, that going to fucking do? <laughs> they're in Cuba. Cuba. The <laughs> Cuban people are protesting for the mu- fundamental and universal right they deserve from their government. Says Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in a statement. Oh, fucking Quote, Yellen. That so Biden, fucking is Biden, like, is he so fucking mentally ill that he thinks he's, like, 
JFK legit. Like he fucking yeah. thinks he's he Kennedy. is acting an awful lot like JFK, who historically, you know, again, like I said, they dealt so well yeah. with I the call, communist regime. Oh, Treasury will continue to enforce its Cuba related sanctions, including those imposed today to support the people of Cuba and their quest for democracy and relief because from the sanctions Cuban regime. Always support the little guy. Yeah. Sanctions always yeah. make the little guy's when life you're, better. You're putting sanctions against these individuals in the Cuban government. What are you telling? Oh, hold you're on, not allowed on, to go to on. Disney World anymore. The, the Biden strongly worded the, fucking letter. The yeah, Biden what? administration said those sanctions were put in place because of the Cuban government's move to quash protests. God. In a separate so statement, hold on. In a separate statement, the president said that those sanctions are only quote the beginning of what the administration plans to do. Quote, the United States will continue to sanction individuals responsible for the oppression of the Cuban people. Because the U.S. government well, never then, quashes free speech. Well, never. not only that, but let's, let's, you know, maybe ball up some of the U.S. in that, you know, those uh, fucking responsible for the oppression of the Cuban people. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the last last paragraph of the article says the U.S. has large has a largely dismal record of invasion. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read. That's that. putting it okay. Okay, mildly. <laughs> mildly. It's a the less U.S. Than optimal. The U.S. Yeah. has a largely dismal record of intervening in Cuba, ranging from the failed Bay of intervening Cuba in everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> U.S. interventionism. Period. Has a, a I'm, try, I'm trying record. to get to this. I'm trying to get sorry, this. Jason. Ranging from sorry. the failed Bay of Pigs invasion organized by the CIA to oust Fidel Castro from power, which led to heightened tensions during the Cuban Missile Crisis, that and decades multiple, more of Fidel Castro being in fucking power. Multiple failed CIA plots to assassinate Castro. Some of my favorite stories about the CIA back during the 60s and 70s are the stories of the attempted assassinations of oh. Fidel Castro because some of them are so like cartoony Bizarre. wacky that yeah. like the exploding Operation cigar. Northwoods Operation Northwoods that's if anybody doesn't know that was my joke about yeah. flying a plane over and having it you know yeah. getting shot out of the sky that was Operation Northwoods that was put into JFK's hand and JFK's like are you fucking crazy <laughs> you remember this is the Kissinger era, right? This is uh -huh. the, the that we're talking about with that. But I mean, like they tried, they tried to uh, the, the, make the joint, the joint cigar. chiefs approved the plan. Yeah. They approved shooting just, down an airliner so just in case, in space. Just in case you thought shit oh these days God. was the most bizarre thing that's ever fucking happened. It's no. not. This no. shit just goes in cycles oh. and cycles oh, and cycles. There is there is so much bizarre. So uh, exploding cigar was one. A uh, poison cigar that would make his the beard exploding fall out. Exploding because... cigar that became a fucking comedy routine all yeah. around the oh, fucking yeah. world. They were actually going to do that uh, to Fidel Castro. Uh, they were also going to try to put, um, ars I think it was arsenic. Is it arsenic or cyanide that makes your hair fall out? Anyway, they were going to try and lace a cigar with that arsenic. so that his beard would fall out because they thought that then everyone would lose respect for him because he lost his beard. Um, they monitored him with, <laughs> and I'm so not making this up. Like you can go, if you go to the international spy museum, which I highly recommend for everybody. It's amazing. Uh, there, they have it in the international spy museum. It is a drone cat. And when I say drone cat, I mean a literal actual dead cat that has been preserved and its skin stretched over a fake remote controlled body and one of its eyes is a camera and it has a microphone and they used a drone cat. To okay. Um, I got an article. Now here. go watch that scene in the fifth element where the president squashes the bug that has a little listening device on it again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's a, there's an article yeah. from NBC um, from November 28, 2016. Uh, the article is titled Fidel Castro, the CIA's seven most bizarre assassination attempts. <laughs> yep. it's, they did so many that there's a top seven list. Yeah, uh, yeah it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, uh, number one is the exploding cigar. Perhaps the most famous attempt to kill Castro came in 1960 when the CIA poisoned a box of his favorite cigars. Yep. Um, two is the reluctant Cuban. 
Uh, months earlier, at the end of the President Dwight Eisenhower's term, the CIA used a series of middlemen to enlist two gangsters to help with Castro's removal. The agency was willing to pay $150,000 at the time. Uh, it's uh, $1.2 million today's money. According to Church's committee report, the mobsters, head of Cuban operations, both were members of the CIA's best. <laughs> the two people that they hired were uh, members of the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. Yeah, that actually, so that one, <laughs> that one might sound a little ridiculous, but considering the time frame, it's only 15 years after the end of World War II, the CIA, well, the OSS, the Off Strategic Services okay. predecessor, <laughs> did use uh, the Italian mob to oh. help get rid of uh, Mussolini yeah. in power yeah. in Italy. So that isn't that crazy. Uh, They've been th- aligning with fucking criminals and gangsters yeah. for forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number three, the painted seashell. Uh, the CIA tried in a more elaborate pay in 1963. Uh, intelligence officials thought they could use Castro's love of scuba diving to topple him. They planned to hide explosives inside a large seashell and paint it with exotic colors to lure the attention of the ocean-loving communists. This is like the fucking I mean, this, this is, oh my this God. is Wiley Coyote. It's this like is some Tommy Wiley Coyote really. shit. Yeah. Um, the just... contamin- yeah, the contaminated diving suit that same year CIA planned to contaminate one of Castro's diving suits with a fungus that would produce a chronic and debilitating skin disease. Oh my Ew. god. Uh, what? the deadly lover. Uh, and in, in, yep. <laughs> in many of the attempts have the air of a hammy James Bond film. Uh, Marita Lorez was Castro's femme fatale. Lorez told Vanity in 1993 that while she was Castro's lover in late 1959, she was recruited as a contact agent for the CIA and asked or and tasked with assassinating a Cuban leader. If you if you aren't familiar she was, with her, she was given two botulism toxin pills to drop into mm-hmm. Castro's drink. If you're not familiar with her, she was an American college student who had been in Cuba quite a bit um, and had met Fidel Castro and they had been dating and, and stuff for quite some time. And even after he took over Cuba, he Castro would still try to smuggle her yeah. to Cuba and stuff. And like the CIA knew and let it happen so that she could maintain the contact um, with him. Her story, actually, there's a really good documentary. I can't remember what it is about her. That's a full interview with her and everything else. It is really, really interesting. All right. Um, the poison pen is number six. The poison pen. Another CIA yep. uh, that was straight out of it. Another CIA that was straight out of the James Bond was the plan to kill Castro using a hypodermic needle concealed within a pen. The needle would be so fine that quote the victim would not even notice its insertion, according to the Church Committee. Uh, it is reported that the needle was to be rigged with poison and injected by Castro by a quote, highly placed Cuban official who was in discussions with the CIA. This however, is like the, Elmer Fudd playing James oh, Bond. Oh, oh yeah. However, they, oh, however yeah. the Cuban official quote did not think much of the device and complained that surely the CIA could quote come up with something more sophisticated than that. Uh-huh. You'd think. Yeah. You, but yeah. again, this is the Kissinger era. This is. This whole era of the Central Intelligence Agency is like you might as well play the Benny Hill theme as you play its greatest hits because it is just this constant like, what? (laughs) When they do stuff, they have the most insane plans. It's constant wag the dog shit being proposed. It's Uh, just hold on. Number seven, the psychedelic speech. Uh, Not all of the attempts on Castro's life. Uh, American intelligence services initially tried other methods to deter- to undermine the leader's public image as a charismatic strongman. In 1960, the CIA planned to sabotage Castro's sp- speeches by spraying his broadcasting studio with a chemical that would make him suffer hallucinations uh, similar to LSD. Yeah, they're basically going to dose him with LSD was their plan, because if he's <laughs> tripping out because they don't understand how communist uh, dictatorships yeah, they- work. They also they also tried dusting his shoes with thallium salts, what would have made his uh, beard fall out. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, okay. So it was his shoes. Okay. Yeah, they thought that if they could get his beard to fall out, that he wouldn't seem like such a strong leader anymore, and then people would rebel. Except yeah, I'm gonna have, know, to, <coughs> I'm gonna have to have to add, to add this link to the uh, okay. Yeah, to the list because that was fucking hilarious. All right, I'm just saying. I mean, I think the beards beards. are those things, but... But they're not (laughs) everything. A leader can appear strong without a beard, all right? I mean, maybe. I don't... I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Did Biden, did he appear as a strong leader to you? Did Trump? 
<laughs> they didn't have. Beers. I'm thinking more along Russian lines here. <sighs> well, Lenin had a beard, and uh, look at how vehemently pe- people followed him. Yeah, but <laughs> what about Putin? Well, that's true. Putin doesn't like have well, hair at all. We know we know uh, yes. Putin's history though, so I'm yeah, not comment on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Putin's yeah. uh, dear old Vladdy is a little scary, actually. <laughs> he's uh, a fucking savage. He's, he's, he's a little scary. Um, yeah. Right. Um. There's also a really good documentary on uh, on Amazon about Putin in his early years and his rise to power and stuff. And that, if you thought he was scary before you watch that, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty scary. Although the funny thing is, is that his old school teacher from when he was like in fourth grade, basically still like is in contact with him. Like she's like one of his favorite people in the world. And like she criticized, like, you remember how when Putin first came to power, he used to walk like a penguin. <laughs> you know, he kind of waddle as he walked and he doesn't so much anymore. That was her. She complained and was like, you still walk like a penguin. We've had conversations about this. You need to stop that. And he actually worked on it because she Damn it, Danny it. DeVito. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, let's move on to that, to that related yeah. article. Derek has said something hard. about socialists not being dangerous. Right. Huh. Didn't you say something about that? Well, I, I said that. Yeah, the harder you squeeze them, the more like galvanized they get. Just right. fucking get out of their way and they'll yeah. starve. Uh, of military removes training document conflating socialist with terrorists. A manual yeah. used in the Navy's anti-terrorism courses lumped course quote, anarchist, socialist, and neo-Nazis together as an example of political terrorists. You so, notice... Um, in in isolation, this might not seem all that sinister, but consider what we have covered in the past few weeks with them mm-hmm. firing people who oppose going, these socialist things and going all the way back to them wanting to use an F-15 flyover, uh, the BLM protest here in Southern California. Yeah. You, you're starting to I notice to know, pattern. I happen to know that at the Office of Naval Intelligence in Suitland, Maryland, mm-hmm. that if you fucking dare to speak against socialism mm-hmm. communism all of that yep. your career is fucking over yeah we've had we've had conversations about that yeah off, off the podcast yeah i, I, I have cause... a i have a friend who may or may not work at fort Meade, and is saying a lot of the same things are happening there mm-hmm. yeah i, I used to, to work the for yeah, the yeah. organization that is centered at yeah fort Meade. um yeah. Uh, this is this is an intercept article, right? Yeah, intercept article. Uh, the U.S. Navy has removed a training document that appeared to conflate socialists with terrorists, following the intercept's publication of that document on June 22nd. Quote: The course manager directed the immediate removal of the training guide assignment sheet 212, uh, Introduction to Terrorism Terrorist Operations, on June 23rd, and the command is conducting a focused review on terrorism-related circ or terrorism related curriculum to ensure we don't have unintended messaging that is from david hecht uh spokesman for the chief of navy personnel if you're worried about unintended messaging let's talk about the word anarchist and how you're fucking using it yeah Uh, a second apartment a second department official not authorized to speak publicly confirmed that the document had been removed from training manuals it's but again, like this is one of those things where maybe on the surface, if you're you you haven't been paying attention to this point with stuff we've been talking about with the changes in the military, this might not seem all that sinister. Yes. But if you consider it in context with all um, this other it, stuff, in a vacuum, it seems okay. But well, if if you if you add in the 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 forced woke training that they're going through and the promotion of well, let's just call them yes men, uh, yes men and mm-hmm. women. Don't want to misgender anyone. And the, the uh, yes, force yes out personnel. of people who refuse to be yes, yes men. Personnel. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. The document included a list of questions for trainees, including the following: "Quote: Anarchists, socialists, and neo Nazis represent which terrorist ideological category?" The correct answer, a defense official told me, was "quote political terrorism." Uh, the training guide was part of an approved curriculum for anti-terrorism uh, officers' courses, according to Hecht. Quote, while, while each Navy 
uh, Naval Education and Training Command course undergoes a formal course review every three years. The Center for Security Forces has been directed to review this and related uh, curriculum for other such references. Political terror, as it, you know, as opposed to all of the non-political terrorists yes. out there. Uh, the Terrorism, document- literally by definition, is with a political aim in mind. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, That's uh, the document's <laughs> problematic language illustrates the challenges of developing a curriculum on political extremism in the military, especially when it comes to politically fraudulent or politically fraught subjects such as socialism. That Um, should not be a politically fraught subject. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... (sighs) It is, though. And it's... I mean, it even is... And sadly, it even is within the anarchist community and... We need to just lift the sanctions on Cuba and ship all of our fucking commies there and take all the people that want capitalism from Cuba and bring them here. We'll just do an ideology It's so overpopulated on the on the island that according to That's one of our, our representatives... No, no, no. So, okay, I, I just... I have to... Capsize. I have to go back. I have to go back. Just like Guam. I have to read this. I have to go back and I have to read this quote. This is from the original article when they talked about socialism being equated with political terrorism uh quote it's just ineffective training because whoever is directing the navy anti-terror curriculum would rather vilify the left than actually protect anything despite the fact that most prominent threat is domestic right-wing terror Mm -hmm. it's not but they've been pushing that for years yes i mean for years and years and years Oh, yeah. yeah, they're they've been I mean, that's it, literally all they fucking care about anymore. Well, they, they say that because it's the anybody who's on the right is a counter revolutionary in their minds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, deep down, that's that's the that's core what, of it. That's what it boils down yeah. to is you don't tow our magical line. They want to change shit. And if you stand in their way, you're a fucking terrorist. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. This is our, this is exactly our, our freedoms are a threat to their collectivism. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, this is exactly, this highlights the problem, the inherent to government, to the entire idea of government. Yeah. And political, any kind of uh, a police Kevin apparatus or anything else. just talking about this this morning over coffee. Yeah. It, it highlights the problem that as soon as people have power, have the ability to have that kind of coercive power over others, inherently they will use it to further their belief system, well, to mean, further their we value. Also, we could also compare this to the Cuba thing, right? The, the people that are, are revolting in Cuba right now would, under the Biden administration, be considered right-wing terrorists. They would be considered yeah. domestic terrorists and a threat to the establishment. If only there were a country yep. somewhere in the world that was broken up into like maybe 50 different regions where you could have different <laughs> political ideologies that you could just move there and live however you wanted to. Um, yep. mm, you know, it feels like there was And there, there was wasn't like a like huge centralized federal like overseeing that homogenized everything. Yeah. And made everybody live yeah. the same way. If only there were a place like that. Well, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, we can, we can, we don't need to get into the why the Constitution was a coup on the Confederacy, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, we don't. Yeah, we don't need to get into this. The Federalists thing. and the Anti-Federalists, and that—that's an entire yeah. four-hour long episode. <laughs> that's, a, that's that's an entire series. Yeah, and that's yeah. that well, four-hour episode on unto itself, and that's if it's just <coughs> talking non-stop. It's four. Yeah. Hours. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Andrew is going to release that as a special. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'm not putting that kind of effort into that discussion. <laughs> you can read up on that yourself, yeah, and yeah. I highly encourage you to do so. Yep. If Start you want to copy you wanna, the Federalist Papers, if you want to talk about anti anti um, anti federalism, go listen to the Radical podcast with Shan Hazel. Like that guy is all about that. Yeah, he puts yeah, on, he's, a, he's an ex marine. He puts on a pretty good program. Well, there's, I mean, you know, and there's all this, now we're starting to see a lot of a push, even within what used to be, I mean, just 10 years ago, was very conventional political circles, very, you know, mainstream political circles. We're starting to see that push for balkanization of the United States, mm-hmm. which is kind of surprising to see, to be honest. Like, well, yeah, we're we talked, that. 
we talked about last week about um was it like 37 percent of the south favored secession and like or 55 percent of the south and like 35 percent of, of the west coast and whatever but uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, and it's, you know, and the funny thing is, is that's happening here where and then you have Europe where under the EU, you know, and and the the Shenzhen Accords. And if you don't know about the Shenzhen Zone and the Shenzhen Accords, like maybe look that up. But uh, the what we're seeing with Europe is Europe steadily becoming one country, one homogenous fucking yeah. culture yeah. and <laughs> the country. EU, that's what the and, EU is, yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the irony is one of the leaders is Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're volunteering to be yeah. overrun by the Germans. Oh, I mean, did, of, you, yeah. did you see that Germany uh, has started an alliance, like a political alliance within the EU to push for more power, like more specific things with uh-huh. uh, Italy and um, Austria? Um, and Poland. Poland's and the other Poland. one. Poland. Yeah. If Poland has, only uh, there were an example in history that could have helped them avoid that. <laughs> we are getting the band back together, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Poland just passed a bill that's really pissing off Israel, so I'm not going to go into that one, but you can look that one up. It's, it's a I just, pro- property bill. It's almost you know. like people don't fucking learn anything from history. Well, they, they don't. don't because they don't teach it properly they don't teach you yeah. the whole history they give you the spark notes of it and say good <laughs> if luck they, if they taught real history you would never see a Che Guevara shirt you yeah, never would. never no you you wouldn't but it's well I mean, I mean you, you let's like just, you'd have like let's just say this no, out okay, loud if, okay I'll, I'll say this I'll say this out loud if they taught proper history you would see Nazis and white nationalists wearing Che Guevara shirts yeah yep. yeah Che Guevara yeah, was would. a fucking monster he was, yeah, he was. He was a fucking Anti- monster and the people who wear the shirts with his face on it are the yep. same people that he would have fucking executed on their knees for yep. the crime of being who they were well and, and Guev- Guevara you know was so extreme that even Castro kicked him out he was so extreme yeah. that the Soviet Union was like nah bro <laughs> no, you're too much trouble. Well, and it's, and to, to bring the CIA it, is like fly, fly. To, to bring it back <laughs> even more, you always hear about, especially those on the left, talking about the oppression of the Muslim people because of you know, or great Chairman Cheeto. Well, the vast majority of those that are standing there going, "We must let the Muslims into the United States." Well, fine, but you realize if we get enough of them here, you're gonna get a free ride off of a skyscraper right yeah like they're not your fucking allies no okay none of these people that you're idolizing and fighting for and shit they won't do the same for you they're not your fucking allies oh my god put in a little bit of effort to understand these people holy shit yeah they don't they don't but seem they to don't understand wanna do it. they don't yeah. want to do the extra work they they just see people that the right supposedly opp- or either oppresses or stands against, so to speak, in their eyes anyway, and they immediately go, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, come help me. When that's yeah. not the case, the enemy of They're your also enemy your is enemy. wonderful diversion. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what you're saying is they act like meth-addicted trout. Yes. Good segue, like Jason. The Kentucky trout. Oh. I'm putting this away. I was about to chew this yeah, gum, maybe, but I'm putting it away. Yeah, maybe well, don't chew the gum. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, this, I, this is a good one, too. This is the Field and Stream article on it. <laughs> I love the Field and Stream. I had to do an article on methodicted trout. Oh, yeah. That trout, that trout is fucked up right now. I'm t- just saying. <laughs> that, is, that, is a, um, that is a fucked up dude, trout. That trout I looks know like... Fields, trout. Yeah, that, that trout looks like he is about to try what? and sell me a bunch of... Uh, home burned cds trying to sell you back trying to sell you back your couch yeah like he's yeah Yeah. he's gonna he's gonna try and sell me back the shit that he's like like, um north farmers cheese all right yeah he he looks like he's about to tell me about his great business plan how he's gonna be a draftsman and (laughs) (laughs) yeah after Uh, staying up all night painting his entire fucking house how he wants to unionize the the car and the the sucker fish yeah he's gonna He's going to unionize the sucker fish. He's going to be the Hoffa of carp. <laughs> oh, you remember God. that one, dude? Because the other day we talked about uh, Hunter Biden wanting to unionize prostitutes. 
Nice. Yeah, it was it was a good article. I'm sorry I wasn't there for that one. I just yeah, I had a so lot of... I said we were. I was really upset you weren't there for that yeah, one. Yeah, we we wound up we wound happened? up naming the episode. I I called him the the Jimmy Hoffa of hookers. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> um, okay. Um, whatever you like to call it, speed crank or ice. One thing is sure. Meth can get fish hooked just as bad as it can humans. It's an entirely yeah. different kind of ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, a new study from the Czech Republic conducted by the Czech University of Tech Sciences in Prague found brown trout can become addicted to meth-laced water. Researchers are now Dude, concerned about... Dude, every time you about... say brown trout, I want to yeah, fucking it's... laugh. Yeah, I just... it's just... I fucking can't with brown trout. Brown Isn't trout, brown trout, brown shirts? trout. <laughs> All right. uh, Dude, the dog's bounty hunter yeah. standing oh, on the side of trout stream just shaking his head angrily. <laughs> Rainbow trout with the Che Guevara tattoo. You gotta watch out for it. Yeah. <laughs> Researchers are now concerned about how fish in the wild will react when exposed to water that has been polluted with methamphetamine. Is this an actual issue? I just... It's, I, apparently it is. There's is. so much meth in the water in the Czech Republic that this is an issue. Well, what and, the if, fuck if is wrong with the Czech Republic? If you remember... It's you know, the fault of to... the cops. They keep raiding and people flush it down their toilets. And it so winds up in the streams. There's an article... There's an article, I think it was like, it was like 2016, 2016-ish, 2015-ish. Uh, here in the Bay Area, they tested like s- like seven or eight different water sources, and they found like measurable amounts of like of like Prozac and and other antidepressants and heart medications and and all sorts of stuff. And it's because people, number one, people's body isn't absorbing all the medicine, Ooh, right? So yep. some so some of it is well, they to discharge, find crazy right? hormone but, levels from all the hormonal yeah, birth and then uh, the there's also like people dumping old medications. Like down the drain and stuff. Because and, you're and fucking told them. to. They tell you to flush yeah. your, your so, old fucking medicine. Yep. So now we have depressed fish. Yeah, that's actually been uh, <laughs> such an issue here in affecting the wild, the the wetlands that lacrosse is basically built yep. on, oh. surrounded by so um, much that lacrosse actually does like prescription drug gatherings. Yep. Rather than having people flush them so that they oh. can incinerate them because it was right. becoming such a problem. <laughs> Yeah, um, Pavel Horky, P-A-V-E-L-H-O-R-K-Y. That's Probably. the most Czech name I think I've yeah, ever it's, fucking it's, heard. Yeah, the, I mean, his, his, his name is yeah, Pavel that's... Horky, but they use brown trout, yeah. Uh, Check Pavel, Horky, Pavel Andreevich. <laughs> the author of the study says meth is getting into freshwater streams in various ways. Quote, methamphetamines, as well as other contaminants of emerging concern, are similarly introduced to surface waters through discharge from wastewater treatment plants. Users of the substances excrete them into sewage collection systems. Then the substances enter the wastewater treatment plants were not designed to treat such contamination. Ah, uh, yes, okay. the brown trout in the sewage discharge. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, contaminants enter the freshwater ecosystem at relatively low but detectable and biologically efficient or biologically they, sir, affected. They're... Levels testing the actual brown trout or the brown trout that came out of these people. Yeah, because no, I feel ha, like hold on, we'll get into we'll get into that. Right. Well, the one brown <laughs> trout is affecting the other brown trout apparently. Yeah, yeah. One of them is an enabler. And one, well, we, one would hope that only one of those comes on their own, but trout. yeah, but with that much meth in their system, you never know. What's uh, <laughs> <laughs> the what's the dealer? <laughs> All right. And Hor- We're the shitty dealer. Uh, in Horky's study, trout showed classic signs of addiction when exposed to water with meth. Researchers held 60 trout in a tank spiked with meth for eight weeks. <laughs> Jesus. What? Oh my God. The fish, oh, and you're the surprised fish... they got fucking addicted. <laughs> yeah, uh, the fish were then placed into fresh or. or... Horky study trout showed classic signs of addiction when exposed to water with meth. Uh, researchers held 60 trout in a tank spiked with meth for eight weeks. The fish were then placed into two different tanks, one with fresh water and one with the water containing the drug. The trout could swim freely between the tanks, and half of the fish favored the water containing the drug. The concern is addicted trout may favor unhealthy areas to congregate in the wild, like wastewater discharge sites because that's where the meth levels are the highest. You mean like homeless people? In the yeah, I was going to say. It's <laughs> at least a fish. I mean, yeah, this isn't unique to fish. 
<laughs> it's I just they appear to all be congregating in this one I area. I feel like you where... could have just gone to San Francisco to get the same fucking result. Yeah. Uh, meth, pol- <laughs> meth pollutes rivers worldwide, but it seems that drugs have <coughs> shed their addiction after a few days. When the meth was removed from the water, the drug-addicted fish shows signs of withdrawal. They spent the first 96 hours in a less mobile state, and after that, they were fine. They tried offering to blow each other, and <laughs> it, was, it was all very sad. What was, what, which episode is, is it? Is Simpsons or King of the Hill? I think it was King of the Hill that, that did this. I think it was Hank, Hank Hill was buying special bait out of the back of a van and kept <laughs> like really big fish. <laughs> that sounds like something from King of the Hill. Yeah, Whoa. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> so they had to fucking oh. study this to get this answer. Like, okay, yeah, it was King, King of the Hill, uh, season two, episode five, called Jumping Crack Bass. And he was <laughs> baiting, baiting his hook with crack. I'm going to start calling the, the crack addicts that I see walking around town doing their twitchy dance thing Jumping Crack Bass. Jumping Crack Bass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Jumping Crack Bass. That's. But I mean, but yeah, they, they just call them brown trout. The, so only, the, only, brown trout. Right, the only bright side of this story that I see is that it wasn't U.S. taxpayer money going to study that. That's about it. Ostensibly. Yeah. The meth I just have a good question for you. Fish. If you're meth addicted or not even meth addicted, if you are, you know, say they left these fish laced with meth and then pan fried them and served them to people, would their teeth still rot? I don't, I don't know. know. Oh my god! I just got a. Don't smoke. give them ideas. I just, I just, I just, oh, got, I just, I just, I just got a just smoked fish. fish. I just got a smoked fish thing in my head, and, and <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm just now I'm just fucking disturbed. Man, I, I just had a fish sandwich, and I haven't slept in two days. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know why, but I, I gotta keep cleaning. I gotta keep cleaning. There's this spot on my counter, and it's mocking me. <laughs> Why are you running the vacuum across the top of your sofa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just. Uh, all right, did you mow your lawn with? Threw some years? fillets on the barbecue, and now I'm vacuuming the roof. Yeah, I don't understand what's <laughs> happening. Why do I include articles like this, you guys? I don't know, Peta. Meth is a hell of a drug. There's something, there's something wrong with me. I'm <laughs> Because they're something fun. <laughs> we gotta have just, fun articles in those, between the heavy ones. Uh, those those are some can some Kentucky trout right there, man. Or actually, oh. most of the American South, if I'm honest, is meth is an we, epidemic well, in no, the it's, South. It's, it's, it's really we have here in the Bay Area. You know, we got a lot of little islands in the Delta, and we have a, an island. I was like 12 or 15 miles from me called Bethel Island. And Bethel Island is essentially a large trailer park and a boat harbor. Methyl Island. Yeah, Methyl that's, Island. That's that's what that's what we call it. Is is Methyl. Yeah, because as soon as you say trailer park and like marina, I'm like, yeah. yep, that's the yeah. meth center of planet Earth, right this, there. This is, you know, this you is know where, where crystal well, meth, like ice, is a huge fucking problem, and people don't realize it. Is Hawaii. Yes. Hawaii is just oh, yeah. absolutely fucking ravaged by it. Well, that's again, do- hence the dog the bounty hunter reference. Like that was like that that was always yeah. a constant thing with dog the bounty hunter. He operated in Hawaii, you know, he ran the kind bail ban- bail bonds, and he was yeah. always calling people ice heads and everything. Remember the yeah. the South Park episode when Cartman's like stupid ass head and yeah, <laughs> everybody and, and like I lived there for three years. And they've run these massive fucking public ad campaigns against it. Yeah, um, constantly. Yeah, Bethel Island here, Bethel Island. They have a an annual thing on January first called the Frozen Bun Run, and it's oh, essentially no. it's essentially where people go out and go water skiing and jet skiing naked uh, on, on the on January first. Because they're all about that ice, man. Like a polar bear <laughs> swim type of thing. But, <laughs> yeah, but but meth fueled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah meth fueled. It's, it's it's pretty bad. So. <laughs> All right, you guys I mean, want to do usually uh, usually the polar bear swim is is like alcohol fuel. Oh, oh there's yeah. there's there's plenty of that too. They make, they, make some, yeah. they make some shine out there too. Yeah, yeah. Here it's, here in Wisconsin, it's, um, like, it's whiskey tango. It's whiskey tango territory. I mean, it's pretty bad. 
Yeah, we we uh, here we'll do it where we actually we we take a chainsaw and cut down through the ice. It's usually like four and a half, five inches at the time. Oh, there's cut plenty down of ice. The ice. Just, and yeah, not that kind of ice though. Uh, but it's, uh, we <laughs> there cut down brown, through there it. There might be some brown trout. Yeah, and they have <laughs> yeah. like you'll you'll go and do it when you come back up. You get like Irish coffee. Yeah. and stuff so you like yeah. there's just tons of booze when you come out of the yeah. water immediately. when i lived in when i lived in the cross i did it one year and yeah you we jumped in to most people like run in from the beach and dive into the water that way and then come back up and get out and immediately right. jump in front of the torpedo eaters um yeah. my group we walked out onto the ice and then jumped in and swam to shore and everybody said we were nuts because that meant that we were completely submerged for a couple well, we of had seconds. No nuts right, by the end let's, of it. Uh, so, no. One do one do one quick last one. <laughs> yeah. Sure, a positive, quick. positive story. Uh, Maine could become the first state to declare food cultivation a constitutional right. The fact. And that why is that necessary? necessary? Yeah, it should be fucking necessary. We shouldn't have to talk about the fact that growing your own food on your own fucking property is your right. You're absolutely not even a constitutional. It's a fucking human right. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. If you uh, were born a fucking human, you have a right to grow your own food on your own fucking property. Can can I can I read the article? Yeah. Sorry, Jason. Fine. Fine. Well, I mean, I'll sit over here and play with the trout. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing with said. your meth addicted brown trout. <laughs> Following the passage of a new bill through both the state House of Representatives and the Senate, Maine voters could decide whether or not food is a constitutional right. Uh, LD95, or the Maine Food Sovereignty Act, aims, aims to strengthen the rights of Maine residents to grow and consume their own food. If it passes, the legislation would formally add in the Maine Constitution that, quote, all individuals have a natural, inherent, and unalienable right to grow, raise, harvest, produce, and consume the food of their own choosing for their own nourishment, substance, bodily health, and well-being. Yeah. Why, like Jericho was saying, why is this in fucking necessary? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, since the bill has already made its way through the state house and senate, it will appear on the forthcoming at November second ballot, where voters can make the final decision. Proponents of the bill note that its passage can help strengthen food security and reduce public hunger in the state and promote sustainable agriculture. Wait, if this can reduce food insecurity, does that mean the state was suppressing people's right to do this? Like people well, there's there's always there's always barriers to entry. Right, right, right. Right. And we, we, yeah. we talked about before with the um uh, the farmers markets, right? The the food uh, cottage laws. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We talked about that with food cottage laws and, and people how um uh, the people that ran the um, the farmers markets were were lobbying against a bill that would allow people to sell food from their own home and and all this other like stuff. Like on stands and stuff yeah. like that in their own yeah. property, yeah. You know, uh, this whole thing makes me think of uh, a guy that I know lives out in the middle of nowhere, about twenty miles from my house. He lives in a double wide trailer that he put on a permanent foundation, and his house, the roof of his house, gets nothing but sun. But he's completely surrounded by like low shrubs and stuff like that. So his yard gets next to nothing. So he put up a picket like retaining fence around his roof and turned his entire roof into a garden. Yeah, they do that. They do that in Sweden, too. Uh, the bill's definitions clarify that individuals will still need to adhere to local and food safety laws and be subject to qualifying meat and poultry license regulations. Uh, especially surrounding producer to consumer transactions, right? Oh, so there's still there's still there's still barriers. That doesn't sound like constitutional right to me. Yeah, there's yeah, well, it's I constitutional mean, right, but uh, just like the Second Amendment, yeah, it's kind. We're of gonna regulate the shit out of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, quote: This amendment strengthens the people's inalienable right to produce food for their own consumption, not to steal, not to trespass, not to poach but to produce food for their own consumption. That is from Maine Representative Billy Fulkenham, uh, re Republican, he testified uh, as he introduced the bill. The fact that he oh, mentioned... Is it, is it because oh. I said Fulkenham? Yes! That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact, that he mentions, <laughs> the fact that he mentions poach is what stood out to me. Like, yes. you know what he means. You yes. know what he's referencing. He's saying, well, you can grow your own vegetables, but if you want to go hunt on the king's yes. land, you need the king's leave. 
is right. still what he's implying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, others believe the bill poses a threat to existing programs, including Rebecca Graham of the Maine Municipal Association. Quote, the revenue to carry out the referendum is better remaining in service and improvement of existing programs. Wait, how do you need revenue for this? Uh, Animal rights and veterinary groups also have a voiced opposition for the bill, citing hygienic and humane concerns in regards to the bill's protection of individual hunting, fishing, and raising of livestock. What? What? Because they don't but, want people to be able to farm animals and then kill them without them being able to control that ability. Yep. But my neighbors do that shit constantly here, yeah, but and they, nobody fucking gets sick. My yeah. My my family and I were at the local county fair, and we were walking past all the hogs, and we're like. I would love to take one of those home and just string it up. Fresh bacon sounds mm-hmm. phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, you I, can the, I, you can fairly easily. You can just buy one and have it slaughtered. And yeah, and like, but I don't want to have it slaughtered. Yeah. I want to do it my damn self. That seems like a lot of work that you don't necessarily have to do. I mean, it's we, not that expensive. We, we do all our own deer, and a deer and a hog are actually very similar. Oh, okay. Process. Well, if, I mean, if you already process your own deer, then yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, you got the room. Like, I don't have the room. Man. Yeah, if you're right. set up. For you know, it, but I tell you what, Andrew, if you decide to buy a hog, you can bring it here and we'll work on it. We get to keep 10% as a fee for using our property to do it. Bacon. Yeah, but is that is that live weight or dead weight? Ooh. Uh, we'll do the whole thing as dead weight. Loophole. Oh, yeah, I say. Hung, hung, weight, hung weight is what I would prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to have to pay it. Does, An- Does Andrew get to choose which 10%? <laughs> 10% no. of each section. Man, oh, I, don't even, oh. I don't even want the American bacon section. I'm Irish, man. I want the <laughs> Irish bacon section. Like, we don't, our bacon is not the same as your bacon. Hey, you smoke <laughs> enough brown trout, you will eat whatever bacon there is. <laughs> We'll get you some of that special brown trout smoked in the smoker, too, Andrew. It's okay. <laughs> hey, since we're almost done, I got to say, Andrew, I fucking love your shirt. I've been looking at it ghost the whole gun. time. We've, I fucking <laughs> love it. <laughs> I fucking guns. love your shirt. That's the uh, deterrence dispensed. Yep. Deterrence dispensed sure. shirt. And on the back, it actually has the QR code that you can scan to get to deterrence dispensed uh, nice. database. So, yeah, it's all and all of them are carrying 3D printed guns from deterrence dispensed. And for people who are are uh, watching, they're the ghosts from Pac-Man. Yeah, there's (laughs) the 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 Plasnikov, the High Point, the FGC-9, and then the the Glock lower. Yep. All from deterrence dispensed. I fucking love this shirt. Fucking awesome shirt. Yeah, I just got it yesterday from Control Pew. It took a little bit. I also got their uh, their Fud Busters one. It looks like a Fud Ruckers logo. It says <laughs> Fud Busters. <laughs> What's your patch there, Andrew? Oh, the patch. So the patch is technically the Pledge of Allegiance, but it's properly edited. I pledge, I allegiance, pledge allegiance to liberty and justice for all. Yeah. All right. Perfect. No. That, I was just from, got uh, that was from uh, Redacted Patches, right? Yeah, that's from Redacted Patches. I just put, got this one the other day. I got a... I survived entirely on caffeine and hate. <laughs> in case of emergency, grab AK. Go in the woods. That's nice. actually what I'm, uh, what I'm doing in a couple of... Uh, like a week and a half. Why I won't be on for uh, for two oh. Sundays in a row. The 8th and the 15th. So, yeah, and I won't uh, be here for I'll those because be... I'll be in Oregon. Yep. Kevin and the boys and Chris. We're leaving Micah here to house it this time. Yeah. And Christopher is, he'll be post surgery for the eighth, so he may or may not be here. But I'll do something. I'll figure so something maybe out. Maybe I'll take a Viking in and join in. I don't know, but <laughs> Chris is stoned out of his gourd. <laughs> Just Chris, I mean, over so there. Chris over there talking about brown trout and drooling. <laughs> Here's something cool. I love talking about this kind of stuff because it's like community building and, and bringing up kids and stuff like that. But one of the reasons Mike is staying behind and not going to Oregon with us, he's 19 now, right? Mm-hmm. Our contractor who is building our new deck, 
kept losing guys, like adult guys, because of the fucking heat. They couldn't hack it being out in the heat. So he had one teenage helper, and then Micah went out there and started helping. And the guy's been paying Micah to be his construction helper and teaching him basic carpentry skills. Micah has been building our fucking deck. Because nice. he's a homeschooled kid, and he fucking, and I, because I was like, take him. Micah, go out there and help. I told Rich, my contractor, he's good with his hands. He's already a fucking welder. Teach him something, and you don't have to pay him, and he'll help out. And he's like, no, I'll yep. pay him. Yep. And so Micah's now Micah on, works for him. Micah's on my uh, post-zombie apocalypse outbreak team. He's on my. He's in my yeah. top five picks. Yeah, those are the carpentry kid. skills. Well, and carpentry like, skills car- are huge. And, and are. a lot of carpentry, people... Carpentry, welder, good listener, and a strong back. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... And, 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 and he has life... other survival skills because who is his mom? I have taught him... He knows how that's, to cook. That's a, that's he knows a strike. How to fucking... Because of who his mom is at the strike against him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I, I see. Well, I mean, I think... and it's oh. funny, dear, that, that you're doing that with him because... When I was 19 years old, living at home, my mom needed a new roof on her house. Mm-hmm. And we had the same situation. The guys showed yeah. up and they stripped it. And then, like, his entire crew left. Yeah. So my mom goes, well, get out there and help him. He's going to be up there for, like, two weeks in this heat. We yep. finished the rest of the roof in, like, two days. Mm-hmm. And then he, come, he comes to me and goes, you know, I know I don't have to do this because you live here, but... Here and he hands me five hundred dollars cash. He's like, "You worked your ass off. We got it done. Take it easy." So I learned how to roof because yeah. they, nobody else could take it. And Rich has been mentoring him too about like how he needs to be with employers and things like that. And Mike is gonna go with him on his next several projects. They're doing a bathroom remodel next. Awesome. You know, learn so all of these skills and everything else. And you didn't need formal education for it, did you? You just needed no. to apprentice. No. But I think a lot of people, miss, they, they underestimate how important, especially like carpentry skills are because. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, is like, it's so hard for kids to like learn math, right? Like a lot of kids have this mental block against math, but in order to do carpentry and do it well, like things like the Pythagorean theorem and being able to calculate surface area and all these other things are really, really important when you're building things. And it's math that you can then directly apply to what you're doing. Right. So a lot of of kids have the mental block against math because they feel like they're never going to fucking use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Show them why it's important. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So, well, uh, yeah. once he's done with his uh, his apprenticeship with this guy, send him my way. I have a deck that needs a few. That needs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty long way. Everything that you can be professionally. Hey, his room and board is paid for. Day. All right. <laughs> While he's here, his room and board is paid for. True. Well, also, have tons of access to uh, the gun range and. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, that might be exactly what you need to entice him because that kid loves fucking shooting guns. Because he's yeah, a smart he's... child. <laughs> yeah. My and, little and brother. Know how to, how to, yes, despite despite his upbringing. Shut up, Jason. What did I ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like I said, while he's here, I'll teach him how to reload if he doesn't know already know how, and that'll be another skill he can throw in a bag. Yeah, he we had a reloading kit for a while, but Kevin never really got into it with the boys, so he hasn't done that. All right, let's no. um let's throw some plugs and get out of here. Uh buy my book. Yeah. Or or else. Or else. My, my, my <laughs> is now three quarters of the way through it. You have to be you have to be How's forceful. It going? You have to be forceful with Great. that. Actually, uh she because she wanted to fit in with her friends and stuff at school, she was very much so, you know pushing her way towards the political left, but it felt forced after reading the book. She has lost a few friends along the way, but um, at the same but time, she's got higher quality friends. Right? She has found a lot more quality in her friendships as well as I think she's found a lot better personal identity. Yes. And that's what I, that oh, that's so important. Okay. So the book is called think for yourself. A critical thinking workbook for beginners. And when I say for beginners, I mean, yes, Andrew's modeling it. Thank you, Vanna. Um, <laughs> it Vanna. is for raw fucking beginners. Like, 
10 year olds and up, you know, or even well, but I, not even kids. that, because I mean, there are tons of adults who have no Never. grounding whatsoever in critical thinking because no. it's yeah. not taught. Yeah, right. they have no idea. So <laughs> it can apply. I mean, if you've never had a logic class, you've never had any kind of critical thinking class or anything that it, it is probably going to work for you. Right. You and know? this is this is like the bare bones of Aristotelian logic and the different types of reasoning. And I kind of push deductive reasoning the most towards the end of it. But it's not long. A kid can get through it, you know, pretty quickly if they're but they could also take a lot of time and do a lot of their own research. There's there's mm. space to write all their stuff down in there. Um, so um, and then most I, of it's just a guided journal. I'm having my daughter run through it with her own notebook. Yeah. That way I can pat, you know, have my son do it later and then totally. have my other kids yeah. do it down the road without buying more copies because I'm a cheap ass. But <laughs> uh, at the same time, I'm like, I want you to keep your notebook. That way, when you're done with it, you can go back to it and be Refer- like, okay, as a reference guide, yeah. This, mm-hmm. Right. So if you ever fall off the, you know, fall off the wagon, so to speak, it's right mm-hmm. there. Right. And I didn't put any fucking political agendas in it whatsoever not one speck of political bias is in that book anywhere because that was super important to me because when i was looking for a resource like this for my kids i couldn't find one without any fucking political bias in it so that's why i wrote this i mean i had i had a workbook when i was in high school i went to a private christian school and we had we had a workbook that was aristotelian logic from a christian perspective is what it was called the reality is when you went through it though it it was just yeah that's all it was (laughs) there's there's no way you can really politicize logic unless you are you know for your examples you're using right and that's where the other fucking yeah there's that's they where the other to, books failed. The other books try to lead kids into or lead whoever's going through the book down a specific path with their examples because that gets them thinking along those lines. And then they right. just turn around and apply that to whatever it is. But this is but, just like the pure yeah. philosophical concepts of, of logic and um, the steps of deductive reasoning. Yes. Uh, basically. Yep. So. Definitely yeah, buy it. <laughs> and your crochet yep. pattern. And the crochet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, your hungry, hungry caterpillar. Yeah, that They're one doesn't get much love, but it's it, it's a really advanced fucking pattern. <laughs> you know what though? My my little sister is probably gonna buy it to make it for my my nephew to be. He's he's still Aww. getting baked, so she's right. probably going to be uh, making it for him so that's she, she uh, should do that before he's born because once she has an infant she's not gonna have time oh no it's that my my one sister the, oh, the one oh. sister that's gonna make it is gonna be gotcha. making it for my other sister's son gotcha See, my, my uh, okay that's yeah i'm the oldest of six i have a lot of siblings right okay. so it's my little brother actually just totally got a job as a armed security guard for duluth trading company so nice. at their headquarters he's now their their one of their security guys she's super cool. jazzed about yeah which is cool um, and i'm like hey he's finally of, like, making me feel old right speaking of <laughs> cooking babies uh amber is only about a month or so from our latest hitting the Popping table. Popping out so, the new one. Um, well, right. it'll be coming out through surgical means because gotcha. Mm-hmm. It, natural birth is just not in the cards. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so we're we're about a month, maybe a month and a half out from from a new little Anne fam. Uh, Another exciting. little anarcho baby. Yep. Um, gonna be a, a baby girl by the sounds of things. Uh, Names picked out, I will review, reveal at a later date. Nice. Right. Bit tot. Y'all are going <laughs> to give me a fucking bladder infection. I got to piss. Come on. Yeah. Go. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, care for your beard like a Viking, beardstruggle.com, Inked Anarchist 15, get 15% off of their products. Also, uh, Avanti Creo and uh, Valerio. Uh, shop valerio.com and avantacrio.com use code inked anarchist 25 you get 25 percent off of streetwear watches sunglasses hats all sorts of cool stuff it's all really neat it's all pretty fancy it's all a little expensive unless you get 25 percent off and if you do that you get to support me and who doesn't want to do that i know i don't so 
<laughs> Use code Inked Anarchist 25 or Inked Anarchist 15 on the Beard Struggle and on the other websites. Links are in the description. Check them out. Also, you can find us over on MeWe. Uh, we have a, a group or a page for Anarchy Among Friends on Table Discussion. And you can find us over on Rumble if you don't want to support mainstream tech. Yes, yes. I should and get can, on the MeWe page. <laughs> yep, you can also find my uh, reborn Boog meme page, Inked Anarchist Hoot Nanny Roundup. Damn it, Jason, now that you said it, I have to pee me too. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find me on Twitter. Why do you think I turned my camera off for a little while? <laughs> <laughs> yep, same here. I, I took care of that. Uh-huh. See, strategy. I told you guys, you guys it's Shark Week strategy. over here. But yeah, you guys can totally check that out. You can check out Inked Anarchist Hoot Nanny, Hoot Nanny Roundup 2 on MeWe. Check out our uh, page on MeWe. It's alternative social media. It doesn't get censored. So it's awesome. It's also very dirty, very frequently. It's uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Which won't surprise anybody who actually fucking watches this show. Yeah, but, you, you should check out check out our pages on MeWe. Check out our pages yep. on Twitter. All right. Rumble, YouTube, the works, man. Okay. Anything else? Anybody got anything else? No, 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 nope. nope. Uh, I think we're probably good. All right. Speaking of Vikings, uh, Eddie Hall tore his bicep, so the fight with Half Thor uh, is going to be postponed to March. Ah. Uh, yeah, he had to go undergo emergency surgery for it and everything. So, yeah. So, ouch. On that note, this is episode 144. Which I think I'm going to call Don't Smoke the Brown Trout. <laughs> and we'll, uh... <laughs> ah, there we got another one. There's, there's you. Anybody who stuck around this long, you got your bonus snort right there. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay, Jerica? I'm fine. She just peed a little bit. Yeah, I just peed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm fine. You don't want to go fishing? <laughs> oh, I have to pee. Let's go. <laughs> something, something, trouser drought, something. No. I told you guys not to piss me off. It's fucking Shark Week. I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so we should just. Sit here and just drag this out. Just drag it out. Uh, Keep talking oh about little God, you guys are things dicks. that don't really matter. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> keeping you here, dear you know, you guys. See, you guys we're see all about full, voluntary you guys see association. The, you guys see <sighs> that full moon? Man. Yeah, it's the, yeah, the right. buck moon. The buck moon. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, don't you have the P2? No, not anymore. anymore. So <laughs> anyway, critical deconstruction of the, the reason for huh? Mongol withdrawal from Europe. Let's let's begin. No. Uh, Don't start, Andrew. <laughs> Don't fucking start, Andrew. Uh, so Andrew has this plane, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, all right, episode 144. We'll catch you on the next one. Don't smoke the brown trout. Peace. Peace. Peace.